Hi and welcome back to another video also follow up regarding the RTX 4090 which definitely had some issues over the previous months. So first of all it started having issues with only X8 PCI Express lane detection and then we did some attempt like re repair attempt which was not successful. We then forwarded this card to Chris Fix Germany who is a professional YouTuber who is also repairing GPUs. Then he fixed the GPU, he did testing, he sent it back to me. I plugged the card back and it didn't work. And I was like, like, what's going on? He tested the card and now it's not working. Then I returned the card back to him so he can retest it again and see if something else was damaged. And once he received the card back, everything was working for him. And he performed a 24 hour test, which like, I, I have no explanation for this. For me, as you could see in the video, I tried it on two different main boards, like entirely different setups and it was not booting and for him everything was working fine. Now we are back and I want to try if the card is now working or not. We will figure that out. The second thing I want to try or test in today's video is going to be a custom water cooler on one of my 7900 XTX cards. I have currently six cards laying around with defective air coolers and I'm waiting for manufacturers to release their custom water blocks. And Corsair was so kind to yeah, lend the first prototype to me so we can do some performance and also temperature testings on one of the 7900 XTX cards. So that's the second thing I want to try. This video is powered by Seasonic and the new Vertex GX. This ATX 3.0 PSU is rated for 1200 watt and natively supports the new 12 volt high power connector and thus is PCI Express Gen 5 compatible. This is ideal to pair the Vertex GX with the latest RTX 40 Gen, but the three included 8 pin PCIe connectors also allow to use it for example with RX 7000 GPUs by AMD and the Vertex offers all necessary protection features such as OPP, OVP and OCP. The high efficiency of about 90% at 50% load allows a cold and at the same time very silent operation due to the semi-passive fan. Find out more in the link below. So as I said starting with the RTX 4090 I didn't change anything it's the same setup same everything same like power cable and everything. I just will plug it back first and we will figure out if it just boots or if I'm seeing the same issues again. Card is sitting mounted in the board. It's the same setup as before. It's also the same power cable, it's the same monitor, same display port cable, same everything. I also had a longer chat with Chris to like discuss possible issues, like possible roots of issues, what we were seeing. And like the only thing we could think of was the power cable, the power connector. I also want to show that I cut some parts of this connector away like weeks ago, but honestly speaking, this should not cause this problem. It can cause the, like one of the sense cables to get a little bit loose, to become loose. But I tested this before and if you plug it in, because you can see there is this red light on the card, but if you plug it in, the red light disappears. If you pull out one of the sense pins, and it doesn't have contact, the red light will light up again. So that should not be the problem because if the sense pin was not connected, then I would have seen the red light last time, but that was not the case. Also what you saw last time was that only the center fan was spinning. And that's also not the case. If you don't connect any power to it, or like one of the power pins is missing, then none of the fans are spinning. So yeah, it's probably not the power cable. Honestly speaking, I have no explanation for this, so but let's just let's just see. <laughs> for, for a second, honestly, I just thought that only the center fan would spin, but all of them are running. So that's already a good indicator that things might be different this time. And as you can see, it's not stuck this time at VGA detection, so yeah, it's uh, probably working. As you can see, we have a display signal. Okay, you know what's weird? So I did the same thing already for the German take and I will just insert footage here from the German take because honestly I just was able to restart this card. I was able to boot the card and everything was fine. I was able to, to show GPU-C but now I got this blue screen. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so we are back. I have no idea what's going on here. I mean, GPU-C looks fine. It's detected with 16x. This looks also fine. I don't get it. I really don't get it. 
Honestly, I'm not quite sure if there is still an issue with this card or not. Because I remember that I had exactly the same thing with this inaccessible boot device already with a different card. Not an RTX 40 gen card though, but it was, it was a while ago. But I remember that I had exactly the same thing, that I had this blue screen with inaccessible boot device and then it was pretty much the last time that the card was able to boot. And then I tried it again, it was not detected again. So I remember that I had the same kind of thing already before. And it's not related to the SSD, because when I had this last time, I didn't even use an SSD. So yeah, not quite sure uh, what's going on. Because I mean, theoretically speaking, both are using PCIe, so it could be some kind of weird conflict or something. That's always a possibility um, you have to rule out, but yeah. Sheik also didn't find any kind of PCIe conflict, so I guess that's not the thing. I also talked to ASUS Germany and I will return this card to them so they can maybe investigate this further because like right now it seems to be working. As you can see there is still display signal, I also ran a full 3D mic, everything was fine, temperatures were fine, score was fine, so yeah. I'm not quite sure if the card is fixed or if there is still something wrong with it. I will stay on it, uh, stay in contact with ASUS Germany, see if they can find something and for now we will just continue with the 7900 XTX. For comparison for the 7900 XTX we are going to take sample A and just going back to one of the slides I did in the previous videos, with card A we saw a pretty much normal behavior in the vertical orientation. So this should be a good example to get some kind of temperature comparison values, stock values for the 7900 XTX before we transform it into custom water cooling. So I have so I have all of the data of this card in the vertical so I have all data of this card in vertical orientation, temperatures, power consumption, and we can check it out once the custom water cooler is applied and have some comparison. Fully disassembled, the card also already cleaned the entire GPU and also the memory area. And here we have Corsair's prototype water block. As far as I know, this is also pretty much retail status, but as you can see, there are some water residues. They use this block for internal verification. That's why it doesn't look new, so you can see some, yeah, just some leftovers, but that should be fine for our testing, it should still represent the correct performance. But if you would buy this retail, obviously you would have a cap with like thermal paste underneath and everything. So it would look a bit different, but generally speaking, should be the same. What I like about these blocks is the fact that like everything is pre-installed, like the, the pads and everything are cut to shape. I wouldn't have a problem with like applying the pads myself, but I, I like when they're pre-cut and when you don't have to cut them yourself, just for convenience. That's pretty nice. There is no paste on here, so we will first apply some thermal grizzly hydronaut on the GPU. If you ask yourself the question why I'm often now also using Hydronaut and not like Cryonaut or Cryonaut Extreme for these kind of applications, it's pretty simple because Hydronaut delivers a very good long-term stability, it's a bit cheaper and it's also much easier to apply. I absolutely love how this looks with the Pretty even aluminium finish, like black anodized with this heatsink visuals and also with a little bit of RGB in the center, it looks quite nice. I'm still waiting for most of the air to leave the lube and then I will probably try to remove the like remaining bubbles, but it's not going to make any kind of temperature difference because yeah, everything that's going to be dissipated heat-wise is just going to be in this area right here with the fins and if there's a bit of air here or there, it's not going to make any kind of difference when it comes to the temperatures and uh, maybe just also ignore how many adapters I used in this case. Um, yeah, One quick test just to check if we have proper mounting, but I mean the load is not high with the just small render test. As you can see, it's like 100 watt, but still with 30 degrees Celsius, just a good indication that mounting should be fine. Now time for gaming benchmarks. This is also one of the cases, I'm just running the low test right now, that after moving from an air cooler to water cooling, you can often get the impression that the coil wine increased.
And theoretically, it's definitely possible that if you have the cooler sitting on the coils with different like thermal pads, for example, that it might subjectively increase the coil whine. But in this case, I'm not even quite sure because the stock fan was so loud that I'm not sure how much coil whine it had stock because you couldn't hear it. The fan was definitely much louder. And in this case, with custom water cooling, it's so much more quiet that you can definitely hear it. The stock we saw temperatures of the GPU of about 67 degrees Celsius under load and a hotspot temperature of about 85 degrees Celsius. Now with the Corsair water block as you can see in the yellow line the GPU hotspot temperature is roughly at the same temperature as where we had the normal GPU temperature previously. Just So just looking at this you can see that we have a drastic decrease in temperature overall. The GPU temperature itself is under load at about 42 degrees Celsius. So overall we can talk about 20 to 25 Kelvin lower temperature than stock. So that's a very good result. It's also pretty much common knowledge that a lower temperature will decrease the power consumption of for example CPUs or GPUs under load due to the better cooling. But as you can see here we have pretty much the same power consumption as before of about 350 watt under load. But this is only caused because the boost increased as you can see here again with the yellow line. The clock is increased by about 40 to 60 megahertz. So not only did we get lower temperatures but also a slight increase in performance by the additional boost clock. But also to be fully honest 40 to 60 megahertz is something you won't be able to notice. You can notice this in benchmarks by about 1 to 2 percent but honestly speaking that's probably not worth discussing it. The temperature results we saw with the 7900 XCX are pretty much as expected and I would say it's perfectly in line with all kind of previous gen graphics cards and I think temperature regions between 40 to 50 degrees Celsius under load is what you expect with custom water cooling and GPUs. It's also something I wanted to do to complete the entire 7900 XTX temperature drama series because there were still some comments that requested testing with different cooling methods so I would say we kind of delivered this that it's not a GPU issue or anything that if you hook up a different cooler it will just work fine. And also with the RTX 4090 I will return it to ASUS as I stated previously and if I hear anything like if I find out anything new I will let you know but apart from that I would also consider this pretty much case closed. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.